Hey, what's up guys, Coach Austin here, and today we're gonna to be talking all things back squat. So this video is gonna be broken up into four different parts. So part one is all about the anatomy and muscles used. Part two is all about the setup. Part three is all about the execution. And part four is going to be all about the common mistakes made during the back squat. Part one of this video is going to be all about the anatomy and muscles used within the back squat. So the group of muscles that we're going to be using in the back squat are going to be the glutes, the quads, and muscles of the torso, including the abdominals and spinal erectors. Part two is all about the setup. So the first thing that we have to do when looking at your setup for the back squat is going to be what is the range of motion or what is your abilities within hip flexion. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna go over a hip flexion test. So in terms of this, we're looking to bring our leg up and bring it over to the point where we get more hip flexion. Okay, so you're gonna notice if our stance is too narrow, we're gonna run into our pelvis. Okay, so we have to kind of move around that and that allows us to get greater hip flexion. That said, wider isn't necessarily better. Because you see, as I go wider, it's gonna pitch my knee in, and if I'm too narrow, I can end up pitching my knee out, okay? So there's gonna be a perfect width as far as being able to get the most range of motion at the hip, while also not pitching the knee in or out, okay? So you can just do that with one side and find a foot placement, and then do your best to try and match that on the other side, okay? So if I just go through that, right where I'm gonna squat, I'm able to set my foot there, and then I'm gonna do my best to match that on the other side, and then go through my range of motion here. Now, if you have limitations at the ankle, I have set up some squat wedges here. So Prime Fitness makes these. These are really good solo wedges to where you're able to actually customize the width so it's not just one single one, there are two solo wedges that are fantastic and that are even better than the commonly used putting your heel up on a plate. So typically a five or a 10 pound plate you'll see people do. These are great because they add even more stability and allow you to generate more force in the squat. So if you have ankle mobility limitations, these help just that. Also, if you run out of range of motion at the bottom and you notice that you have that rounding or butt wink at the bottom, these squat wedges are gonna help that as well, allowing you to get greater depth without that rounding at the lower spine. So next, we're looking at the walkout. Okay, so when looking at the walkout, as we're looking at the walkout here, we wanna talk about the bar height as well. Okay, so as we're getting this bar height, we want this to be in a position to where as I come under it, I'm able to set my feet in a nice stable position, give tension to my torso, stabilize my torso with my abdominals, and be able to press up through the bar and have clearance so I can take one step back, two steps back, and then you can start to set your width, okay? The next thing that we're gonna talk about is going to be head position. So as you go through that walkout, that head position is going to want to be neutral, okay? So we're not gonna to wanna to look up or look down. It's just going to be a neutral head position with a forward gaze out in front of you. One of my favorite things to do is to actually pick a spot on the floor and just focus on that point. The next thing and last thing in part two here is going to be breathing. Again, we talked about this in the bench press video, but here, as we go through the rep and stabilize and get ourselves set up, so after we lift the bar up and we go through our walkout, we get our head into that neutral position with the forward gaze, Gonna to wanna to take a deep breath in, stabilize those abs, and then go through the rep. And as we come back up, you'll be able to breathe out. Or if you are using 
higher loads, you can actually take that breath in, hold, compress, go through your range of motion, and then when you get to the top, breathe that air out, and then reset the breath. So part three is all about execution, okay? So I'm gonna get under the bar and go through the steps that we're gonna be thinking about to best execute this movement. So the first thing we wanna do, again, is make sure that bar height is set in a good position to where we can comfortably get under it, stabilize our feet, stabilize our core, and actually press through the floor and where that bar has enough clearance to where we're not gonna hit it on our way out. Okay, so I'm gonna take one step back in that walkout, take my second step back, and then I'm gonna finish setting my feet. Now, you're gonna notice that I'm actually going to be stepping back on to squat wedges. Okay, so these squat wedges actually do help tremendously. As I mentioned in part two, this squat wedge can help with ankle mobility limitations and also help you gain a little bit more depth into hip flexion at the bottom and actually avoid that hip or butt wink mistake at the bottom. So now that I'm set up, the first thing that I'm going to do, make sure my head is neutral, make sure my abs are engaged. I'm gonna drive, start by driving my hips back and bending at the knee. Hit depth, drive through the floor, drive my hips forward, and then reset my breath. Okay, so remember in part two, we talked about the breath. So here as my, my head is neutral, and take a breath in, stabilize my core, go through the rep, and as I come to the top, breathe out and reset my breath. So part four of this video is all about the common mistakes made within the back squat. So the first common mistake that is made is going to be having the head up. Okay, so when I was in high school, I was taught to pick a point on top of the wall or maybe even the ceiling, have that head up and pick a point and focus on it. Okay? And what that can do, although it may not make you weak in that moment, what it can do is create a broken link in that chain and create vulnerabilities that can lead to injury. So that's why if that head is up, you tend to let the abs go. It allows that lower back to round and you can be at risk for the most common in injury within the back squat, which is that low back injury. So in terms of having the head neutral and just a forward gaze, as we talked about in part two, that's a great idea. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is going too deep within your squat. So very common to hear, you must go ass to grass for the squat to count. Problem one, we are not powerlifting. We are not in a strength sport. We're training for our physique-based goals and we're training just to feel good. So with that in mind, set things up for your individual limitations and capabilities. So in terms of going too deep, I'd much rather you stop just short where you're strong, where you're comfortable, where you're gonna steer clear of injury than to go too deep and put yourself at risk. Number three is going to be an excessive bounce in that bottom position. So the excessive bounce, as I can demonstrate really quick, is just when you get down to that bottom range and you let go and just bounce out of the hole and you miss that entire portion, which is actually the hardest portion where there's most tension in this movement. So it's similar to like the bench press when you just let it go, bounce off your chest, and it gets back up to a point where you're really strong. We don't wanna skip the part where we're weak. We wanna maximize that and put time where there is most tension. Okay, so we want to come down nice and controlled with a good tempo. You can let go a little bit, but we wanna still be in control. We don't wanna just let go altogether and bounce back up to then put tension back on our muscles instead of tension on those passive tissues and connective tissues. The next is going to be your stance. So when looking at your stance, we don't want it to be too narrow, 
Okay, so if it's too narrow, the common, a common mistake here is thinking more narrow is going to be more quad, and the wider is going to be more hip dominant, which is not the case, and we can show you that in another video, but trust me here, that's not necessarily the case. All you're going to do, one, is put yourself at risk for injury, and two, drastically limit your range of motion. So if your feet are too close together, I'm gonna run into limitations where again, remember in part two, we went over that hip flexion test. So that's basically what I'm doing is I'm running right into my pelvis. Okay, so if I want to get, oh, <laughs> if I want to get more range of motion, I'll actually come out and increase that here. Okay, so more narrow is not more correct. Likewise, wider is not necessarily right either. Okay, so it's about finding that optimal distance. So if my legs are too narrow, I'm gonna li limit range of motion and my knees can actually start to bow out at the bottom of that squat. If my legs are too wide, I'm gonna again limit range of motion and my knees could actually cave in at the bottom of that squat. The last mistake we're gonna go over is forcing your torso into a position that it doesn't belong. The most common one here is individuals with long femurs, so long thigh bones and a shorter torso. When that's the case, that ratio causes you to fold over more drastically. So an individual like myself with a long torso and short femurs, I'm actually set up to squat really well to where my torso angle is still very upright, which as you see in videos is quote unquote correct. Not necessarily the case if you don't need to do that or if your femurs are long and your torso is short, it's okay to fold. Okay, so if you naturally fold in the squat, so if you have long femurs and a short torso, and as you're going through your range of motion, your body wants to fold, that's okay. That is your individual mechanics, and you have to adjust things to your individual mechanics. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys are interested in coaching, reading an article, or watching another video, check us out, physiquedevelopment.com.